My name is Jordan. I work with the Eckerd College Search and Rescue Team as their staff instructor. Today we're going to be working with our drill boat here in the background. Uh, we filled it up with a little bit of water to simulate what it's like to be on a boat that's taking on water uh, in that idea of free surface, so the free movement of water on a deck. Um, then we have a few different safety things that we have on the dock today for dewatering a boat. We're going to start with a baler, so very basic, move up to a hand bilge pump, we do have an electric bilge, and then our final thing is going to be our gas pump that's going to pump up to 50 gallons a minute. So if your boat's taking on water, the top three things you should do is always locate your life vest and put it on first and foremost. Um, call using your VHF, hopefully it's tuned to channel 16. Call the Coast Guard, let them know what your situation is so that they have that kind of touch base with you and they know where you are and what's going on. And then stay calm. You don't want to start freaking out and moving about the boat. You want to keep the boat as level as possible. Try and plug that entry point if you can um, and start bailing out some of your water. Feel like you're being okay. No. So let's say that you have now two hand build pumps. So who wants hand build pumps? Really? All right, I'll exchange balers for hand build pumps. Okay. So you just gotta give it a few pumps to prime the actual pump, and it'll start going. So this is our water flow that we're dealing with. Are we we're looking better or worse? Worse. Worse. <laughs> All right, how long do you think you can get your arm to pump up and down like that too? Not long. <laughs> Hopefully you have a bilge pump on board, you've had your float switch checked, all of it's functional, your wiring's not corroded, anything like that. Um, and that's functional. Even if you're working with a bilge pump, remember the bilge pump is like that big around, right? They're usually pretty small unless you're on a larger vessel. And then the hole that it's going to come out, they're relatively small in diameter, right? So you can't output that much water. So. Um, if you were to call us or CTO or some sort of commercial agency that does have a pump, um, they'd come up, put you in a hip toe, right? Stern to stern, bow to bow. So you have a bow line, a stern line, and then we actually have lines that go across to the opposite side from us to try and pull up on both sides of the gunnels. And we put a pump in. Hopefully we have two and we thought ahead and all this stuff and it all works and somebody's holding the dewatering hose so it doesn't like flail all over the place. That's what we're hoping. So. If I can ask you guys to all shuffle towards the bow so that all the water is in the heaviest point. Um, typically on a boat, that's going to be the stern. Our boat doesn't have an engine, so it's the bow on our boat. Are you all both ready? Ready. Okay. pretty quick, right? There's still a little bit of water in the boat. Um, our pumps are outfitted with a this black strainer. So it has a one-way valve, right? So the water can come in and it can't go out once it's primed. Then it has this strainer. So the strainer can come off. Let's say you have to dewater like an inspection port or something like that and this whole unit doesn't fit in it. You can just take it off. Uh, you just have to be wary of what you're going to suck into your pump, right? Leaves, um, acorns, whatever, t-shirts, stuff like that, you don't want to suck into the pump. 